Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. Happy Monday, Dr. Paul. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope it stays that way. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've got so, spring in the air here. Yeah. So that's put us in a good, good time mood, to be in the garden. Yeah. I went to the beach over the weekend. Oh, did, I didn't get did Abbott know about it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'm sure you wore your mask. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so Three of them. So <laughs> just so you didn't take your kids down there with their mask on, then I don't know. <laughs> and then I'd be really wondering what's going on. Well, we need to talk about coronavirus. It's still in the news. Mm -hmm. There are other things in the news, too. You know, I keep thinking the other day when we were when we when we do foreign policy, and we will again, yeah. I, I imagine one of the hot spots going to be Syria. You know, yeah. th this declaration on how many dollars worth of oil that we got. Yeah. And, and that was a Republican position. We're going to pay for our interventions with taking their oil. Yeah, the oil. But anyway, we're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about uh, the coronavirus and the problems and a TV interview or uh, event in the Senate the yeah. other day. Uh, there was a relative of mine, happens to be my son from Kentucky, had a little confrontation with, uh, with somebody by the name of Fauci. And yeah. I would say, Daniel, I think uh, he got Fauci squirming a little bit. Yeah. Well, if looks could kill, Fauci would <laughs> wanted to drill into him, I think. But uh, we have a couple of clips, and this sort of sets the stage because the whole point that Senator Paul was making is why are you telling people they still have to wear a mask after vaccination? If you really want people to stop being so averse to vaccination, why don't you stop telling this? Because you know it's not true. You know that once you're vaccinated or have gotten immunity naturally by contracting and defeating the virus, then you are no longer spreading the virus and you do not need to, to wear a mask. Why do you keep telling people this? Let's, let's have it in their own words. And these are, this is first is a clip from the Senate itself, from the hearing, but this is through Fox News. And then a little follow up from Tucker Carlson in an interview. So let's uh, full screen this and listen to this one. Someone finally asked Fauci this at a Senate hearing yesterday and here's how it went. You're and telling everybody to wear a mask, whether they've had an infection or a vaccine. What I'm saying is they have immunity and everybody agrees they have immunity. What studies do you have that people that have had the vaccine yeah. or have had the infection are spreading the infection? If we're not spreading the infection, isn't it just theater? No, it's not. the vaccine and you're wearing two masks. Isn't that theater? No, that's not. Here we go again with the theater. Let, let, let's get down to the facts. What proof is there that there are significant reinfections with hospitalizations and death from the variants. None in our country. Zero. And let's go ahead and just do the second one right afterwards because this is where Senator Paul is telling Tucker Carlson that Fauci is lying to us and he knows he's lying to us. He thinks he's doing it for our own good because he thinks we're too stupid. <laughs> if we can queue up the second one too, I think it's worth seeing. There's no proof that when you've been vaccinated or when you've gotten the disease naturally that you are spreading it. If there were, it would be all over the news. There are no news reports and no scientific studies saying that after vaccination, that there's some sort of widespread contagion that people vaccinated are spreading the disease. It's just not true. What Fauci won't tell you is that he's telling you a noble lie. He's lying to you because he doesn't think we're smart. So there you have it. There's a quick little little redux of what happened over the, I think, on Thursday and Friday. Right. And... Uh the charge of lying, I think, is pretty accurate because uh, it, it just reminds me of, uh, you, you know, when you deal about uh, foreign policy, you have a lot of lying and the saying goes that uh, truth is treason and an empire of lies. And even if the war is a virus and uh, lockdown and this sort of thing, uh, lying is, uh, you, you know, commonplace. And uh, but the truth is uh, going to expose them. And I think that's what Rand was trying to do the motivation there was just trying to get the get the truth out about what's going on you know i've been thinking about all this thing all the ramification you know of uh, what the cdc knows uh, and what they don't know and what they don't report or they deal with uh, and wait a long time uh, before they change their tune you know like uh, right now they're changing their tune on some of the lockdown rules so people people are getting to know what's going on but, you know, I think there's uh, a lack of incentive on the part of CDC 
to uh, really investigate it. Yes, it is true that they get information, they're reporting to, uh, I, I, I guess fairly accurately, of all the people who are, are having complications. But uh, I'm, all, I'm wondering if, you know, that they know exactly uh, this truth but they don't really even investigate it. They don't come up with a, with a solution and say, well, well, there's no relationship, you, you know, with, uh, with, with these viruses and all and what, what he's claiming. But uh, I think there's some things if they really had an independent investigation of these viruses and what's going on, they'd probably be shocked because there's in, innuendos, there's assumptions made, and when uh, it doesn't seem like we know everything, because I think we're dealing with a virus uh, or a vaccine which is new and untested, and who knows what's going on. So there's a, it's just an invitation for people to either fudge the figures, but if they if they look into it uh, too. Uh, too much on this testing, you know, just like the testing that they have used uh, for for a long time, the PCR test, they yeah. found out it wasn't working, and, yeah. and they finally and they admit admitted it. Yeah. it. They finally admitted this, and now if if they investigate this, they might find out that they said they had an accurate test that they could go tomorrow and magically test every single person that's had a vaccine. And uh, what if they found out that? 30% had antibodies or 60%, you, you know, but they come up with these numbers and then all of a sudden they wonder, well, what are, what are the results? Oh, uh, even if they're positive and even if you've had this disease, don't sweat it. Uh, you, you, you know, you've got to take care of yourself. It hasn't solved our problem. Yeah. So what if the vaccines are a, a lot less effective than they claim? But, but, uh, that's that's a little bit of conspiracy mm -hmm. stuff, but I think it's sort of uh, you know there was a time when the things that uh, Rand was pointing bring out they say that's just conspiracy stuff. You're just trying to undermine what we're trying to do in public health. So they always usually go back to yeah. the patriotic zeal and taking care of the children. Sure, they really are taking care of the children with lockdown. Yeah. You know, if you didn't deal with anything else then uh, the evil that has done to the children uh, uh, would be a lot better off because, uh, you know, when that child was objecting to the face mask on that airplane, I thought, the voice of reason. Yeah. <laughs> the voice of reason in, uh, in the shortcomings the child had, but probably was wiser than uh, the whole United States government that wrote all these rules to try to lock down and strap down a small child that was no threat to anybody. Yeah. If, if our government can be intimidated with things like this, you can't tell how much they're intimidated to make sure the evidence doesn't get out, but it's, it still creeps out. I think, I think uh, our side has gotten more information out now than it had a year ago yeah. because uh, I think that uh, uh, we find that Fauci's on more on the defensive. <laughs> <laughs> the more he is, it looks like it. You know, we put up an article on Ron Paul Institute from the American Institute of Economic Research where they pointed out that there were more COVID suicides than COVID deaths among young people in the United States. So that says a lot. Yeah. But back to the exchange, and here's really the crux of it. Senator Paul was saying, show us one study. You're making this claim that you can have to continue wearing masks. Show us one study that people uh, can reinfect others who have been vaccinated or who have acquired and defeated the disease. And Fauci had nothing. He had no study. The only thing he said is, well, we don't know. These new variants might be something of danger. <clears throat> and this is something interesting because Senator Paul then uh, responded on a tweet with a tweet. I think it was yesterday. Let's put this next tweet up. And <coughs> Senator Paul brought the science. <coughs> Sorry, Dr. Fauci and other fear mongers. A new study shows vaccines and naturally acquired immunity do effectively neutralize COVID variants. Good news for everyone, but bureaucrats and petty tyrants. <clears throat> and this is a new study from the Journal of American Medical Association. I've clipped the relevant uh, part of it. If we can look to the next one, and I'll just read it very quick. This is from the actual study. The study found neutralizing activity of infection in vaccine elicited antibodies against four <coughs> SARS COV2 variants, including B1, B117, et cetera, et cetera. Because neutralization studies measure the ability of antibodies to block virus infection, these results suggest that infection and vaccine induced immunity may be retained against variants. So, but. <coughs> 
Fauci is not about to be defeated. He went on a friendly news network, and here's what he had to say. Uh, Senator Paul is crazy. He's dead wrong, he said. He's saying, Senator Paul has a message that we don't need masks, which goes against everything we know about how to prevent the spread of virus. And this is Fauci again talking about Senator Paul. He was saying if you've been infected or if you're vaccinated, don't wear a mask, which is completely against all public health tenets. Well, let's look at this next clip of Fauci from one year ago. Fauci says <laughs> he's willing to bet anything that people who recover from the new coronavirus are, quote, really protected from reinfection, saying the exact opposite a year ago than what he said about Senator Paul. So is this I, politics I, or science? Yeah, but, but I would say that uh, they're, they're, they're against uh, what they're saying is they're against these. Uh, he's against the government edicts trying yeah. to tell us the truth and trying to point out science. <clears throat> and uh, also the individuals and we've been included. A lot of good people have been included in the argument that look at the entire picture and look at this uh, uh, at the science of it all. But uh, many have been labeled as you know just endorsing a conspiracy theory but just think of if somebody wanted to use labels uh you know just think about fauci and and gates and these other people how they they have an agenda and it that's the only way you can explain this they have an agenda it fits into the agenda because uh for them to argue that they're they're closer to scientific proof a good scientist probably says that um, you know, questions can be raised as you're trying to prove one thing or other, and you should continue to study it, and you should look more more evidence. And in a situation like this, which is a public health policy, you should have good journalists, medical and non-medical journalists, to ask the right question. But no, no, they uh, they, they don't they don't ha we don't have that. And uh, when one individual does it, they stand out and they say he's <laughs> the government says. And Fauci represents the government. Yeah. That, oh, he's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's that is really bad because I, I think it's um, people who want to seek out the truth, and, and in in this sense, arguing a case for science. And at the same time, uh, the the other side, I, I think they're honed in on their agenda. And there's a list of different reasons why people do that. Well, you know, on one hand, Fauci couldn't be criticized if indeed in the spate of this one year there was new scientific evidence presented. That's our whole argument against this so-called science is settled idea. So perhaps Fauci with what he knew back last year about uh, this risk of reinfection, maybe that was correct. And so maybe now when he says there's a big risk of reinfection, you got to keep your mask on. But th the problem is if there has been this shift in the science, why couldn't he present any evidence whatsoever that the shift has occurred. Okay, now we know from these two studies that what I said back last March was wrong and you actually can reinfect. Here we have the data. He doesn't present that. Senator Paul gave him every opportunity to present that data. I'm sure he came prepared. I'm sure he has a team of briefers. He did not bring the data to justify this massive shift from a year ago, uh, no reinfection to now wear it or you'll reinfect others. It seems like sometimes he doesn't even keep up with uh, with CDC, yeah. you know, when, with the testing, because they came around to understanding that that test is not an accurate test. But um, I, I think it's so hard to sort out this science when people have depended on a test which has been proven unreliable. And, uh, th th and this to me is very important, but there's been a lot of talk a lot of a lot of declarations in this past year and a lot of pain and suffering that came from lockdown because of this and t to me it's back down to uh you know the uh pcr test yeah. it is it's amazing i don't know the detailed history of this but uh why why didn't they know about the pcr test the way it runs make uh, makes a uh a, a big difference, a cycle threshold business, uh, how long you run the test. And if you search long enough, and they talk through, if you have certain cycles it goes through, and uh, they finally declare that you, you shouldn't go past 35 or you're gonna get 
too many fragments of viruses and therefore have too many positives. And uh, <clears throat> yet they've just declared that. So over a year they've been doing that. And like your suggestion is a good one. Why don't, you, why don't they just admit it, you know, and work from there? But they still go, we, I don't think we know in this country, uh, I don't know, uh, somebody must know whether the PCR test is being run anymore or not. My guess is that they, well, they probably wouldn't buy, bother, bother manufacturer. They'll just manufacture more and, and make, make more money. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's been there. But uh, just on this testing, I want to mention a couple things on here. Uh, there, there's an article here. That, why are the COVID cases crashing? And we've talked about this yeah, a little bit obvious, because yeah. one time, uh, uh, you know, it was bloated. It wasn't, they weren't <laughs> crashing. They were bloated because they were looking and, and searching for it. And uh, th this article that uh, appeared in Zero Hedge uh, came off from Off Guardian magazine. And it says, uh, why are the cases crashing at this moment? And uh, they looked at it and they said, some people say, well, the vaccines, the vaccines are working, and it's wonderful. And they, they worked on that and gave a very logical answer to that and said, there's no relationship from uh -huh. all the evidence they have. And then the other one would say, well, it wasn't the vaccines, it was the lockdown that was so effective, you know, and took care of, uh, took care of it. And you already pointed out, uh, that uh, it created more problems. People died from other things. Uh, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't answer the question. Uh, but uh, n now it, it's this uh, th threshold business that they understand that uh, because that came out in January where they announced that uh, the threshold didn't work. But I think, uh, I think we've ex expressed some suspicions of, on this even earlier than that, and others have too, that uh, you can't rely on this. And uh, of course, the one thing that, uh, this is as, as much of a gut reaction for me as anything, is the fact that uh, it's not been approved, it's not been fully attested, these vaccines, uh, it's dealing with a vaccine that uh, engages uh, RNA instead of DNA, and they, they have no experience with that. And uh, so I think so far there is more unscientific gobbledygook going out there than real scientific activity that uh, they should be working on. So uh, hopefully uh, that will be solved. Nature sometimes cancel out this artificial stuff and the artificial science that they have. And uh, uh, right now, sometimes the, the so-called uh, masses come up with the truth. They, the, the, the people who want this, that are furious that somebody won't wear, wear a mask, uh, they speak out uh, when they see too many people having fun at the beach. Yeah. They're, they're still doing that. You know, you, you just can't have fun. Uh, and they have to be seen as the protector. We will take care of the people because nobody else will take care of it. There's too many people out there on that internet. So watch out for them because they'll give you some misinformation. But uh, right now we need uh, a few more uh, investigators, uh, journalistic investigators to continue to look at this and document what they can find. Well, you bring up the issue of the PCR test and it has been pretty widely discussed, although not on the mainstream media, of course, but the biochemist inventor of the PCR test, Kerry Mullis, who actually won a Nobel Prize in connection with inventing the PCR test, he is on record saying this should never be used as a <laughs> diagnostic tool. It should never be used for this. And he also is on record saying that Fauci uh, will easily lie if he thinks it gets him political advantage. He was no fan of Fauci. Interestingly enough, here's one for the conspiracy theorists. He died just less than a half a year after the emergence of the COVID-19. So he wasn't around to tell people not to use a PCR test. It makes mm. you makes you wonder about that. Well, you know, Fauci uh, in his uh, dissertation or in his uh, so-called arguments, he talked a lot about the variants uh, that Rand wasn't taking it into consideration, that there are variants out there. And, and yet, yet these people who are immune 
from the others. They can't be immune from these variants. There could be five of them. There could be more than five. And, but they have no, no justification that these people uh, have established a new disease. As a matter of fact, there's still, still some people who wonder whether COVID is a brand new, you know, new disease different than anything else that we've had. Some think it's a variant of what we've seen before. But the variants, that's, that's an endless argument. But I think we've made that point many times. That <clears throat> just because uh, right now we're seeing, you, you know, that uh, uh, there's time now to move away from the lockdown, uh, but they're increasing the lockups. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're the excuse for more lockups. And, uh, and then um, uh, now, now when the death cell the pain and the suffering and the cost of this to the kids, to everybody else, to the economy. It is unbelievable, I think, what's happening. And, and you know, if you talk about this in a theoretical sense, uh, just think we went through the 20th century worrying about communism and fascism and Nazism and all these things. But they, in this country, they never closed the churches. Yeah. But because of this fear mongering, it, it, uh, it closed uh, to a degree of some sort, yeah. uh, but it's still, the churches aren't back to normal. No. Just a few, a few who have struggled to maintain what they believe they had a religious and a personal freedom right to do. Now should we move on to the six foot thing? This is there kind of a go. variant, <laughs> speaking of variants, this is a variant of what we've been talking about because, you know, we're told you must follow the CDC guidelines. We can't go on the show and say anything that contradicts the CDC guidelines or will be canceled, uh, with destroyed, <laughs> sent to the gulag, whatever. But the problem is they keep moving these goalposts and they're not moving them one way or the other, they're moving on every which way. And one of them was this supposedly magic six feet rule. And you remember when the first thing, when the COVID first broke out, all the stores put the dots. You gotta stand here, you can't stand here, look like Twister. You know, you, you can't stand here six feet. And so the origin of the six feet rule, then all of a sudden we're hearing now from New York Times, from CDC itself that, well, you know, that's not necessarily uh, so, so sacrosanct uh, as we think. And in fact, we, we were looking at an article in the New York Times over the weekend where they're now saying, uh, well, maybe it's three feet for kids. Maybe it's not six feet. And I have this next clip because this really encapsulates the whole, the whole problem we have. This is, a, this is an expert. This is from the New York Times. The origin of the six foot distancing recommendation is something of a mystery. <laughs> Quote, it's almost like it was pulled out of thin air. <laughs> said Lindsay Marr, an expert on viral transmission at Virginia Tech University. So on one hand, we're supposed to believe everything they say is science, and all of a sudden we find out that it just comes out of thin air. So maybe the next time Fauci gets grilled, show us the scientific proof that this virus uh, can uh, jump six feet. Yeah. And why can it only jump three, three feet? Oh, it's getting weaker <laughs> because of lockdown. We've made this virus weaker. It, it can't jump quite as far, you know. So, uh, but you know, it's, it's a, this whole process is due to collectivist thinking. Everybody thinks as a crowd and you can't be an individual. And right now, the pain and suffering for not joining the crowd is getting pretty severe. The penalty is you can lose your job. You can lose your job and your livelihood, all kinds of things. This cancel, cancel society, uh, society uh, culture is really a serious, a serious problem. And uh, you have this collectivism and you do have uh, uh, popular delusions. These, this is delusional to all of a sudden everybody go along with it because they're, they're, they're terrified because the experts tell them this is dangerous and you better do something about it. And uh, a little bit of that happened, but the real, uh, under 9-11, uh, but 9-11, you know, probably was a little more justifiable. He lingered too long and they blew it out of proportion. But, uh, you know, something happened here and everybody, you know, could see the images. But here, here, uh, nobody sees it. It's, they just have to listen uh, to, to the politicians. And that is, that is dangerous because they really accomplished, and from their viewpoint, a lot more than uh, I ever dreamed they would. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, I was going to switch over and do a couple of uh, photos. This is just because this is what we do because the mainstream media won't do it. Dr. Paul, there were massive, massive protests over the past few days in Europe. Here's one from London. Uh, massive protest. I do not consent. These are anti-lockdown protests. Here's the next one from the UK, from London. Look at these people. The BBC reported, oh, just a couple hundred people were there. But if you see the photos, 
thousands and thousands of people, no masks. They are sick of it. Here's Germany. Uh, this is actually pretty sick. The German police just beat the heck out of people out there. This is after weeks of the German media calling them neo-Nazis. They don't look like Nazis to me. Maybe they're undercover. And here's the next one from Germany. Uh, thousands of people out and they are sick of their government oppressing them. Here's something interesting. The final clip on the protest, Dr. Paul, this is from the Netherlands. If you remember last week, we showed the police in the Netherlands sicking dogs on peaceful protesters, beating them with batons. Well, here's the response from the great Dutch people. This is Amsterdam. The Netherlands protesters for freedom are being protected by veterans and health staff against the police. Veterans of the Dutch military and healthcare workers made a line of protection, protecting the protesters against the police. Here's the next one of the same thing. Here is the front line of doctors and medical professionals saying, stop beating up these peaceful protesters, let them protest. Really a remar remarkable, remarkable event, I think. I wish we could duplicate that here in the U.S., but I'm glad to see the Europeans who've suffered at least as much, if not more, than we have with these insane lockdowns. Glad to see them standing up, and I hope they continue. Very good. I want to uh, mention something about why people get motivated or how they slip into this acceptance of information that uh, we look at it and we want to discuss it, read about it, and study it, and, and, and challenge the, the whole system. Are they right or are they wrong? Does this conform to good science? Uh, but we do our, our very best. But in this case, uh, th there is an agenda, I do believe, for a lot of people. I think once they start off on this, th this becomes a political agenda. Just think of the power uh, that has been abused by the executive orders all the way from the president on down to governors and, and mayors of cities and county commissioners and county judges. And uh, they love the power and they won't. And even when they're released to a degree, they cling to the political power. It's a disease as far as I'm concerned because they, the excuse will be, we care about the children. We have to take care of the children. And the, and the teachers who know what's best for their children, they say, you cannot go back. It will be dangerous to uh, to the children. So there's an agenda there that uh, is, is narrowed down to one special group. But uh, there's also, uh, you know, frequently the, the term war profiteering has been used in foreign policy and the fighting wars. And right now we have a military industrial complex. Uh, they're just Provo uh, uh, you know, planning that for the next war, and you always have to plan and build new weapons, and there's a bit of war profiteering in there, weapons profiteering. And uh, right now, I, I saw a figure the other day on how many billions of dollars that have been spent on, on these vaccines, which none of them have been truly tested, which they do under ordinary circumstances. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think there's a lot of uncertainty for science. Uh, the, even the scientists who are trying their best, it's difficult to get to an answer when it's a very difficult to get people to agree when even the person who, who, uh, who designed the uh, PCR test says it's not a good task, that there's, there's something terrible going on. But uh, there, there is a lot of profiteering going on and, uh, and a special interest. And I think you should have um, a special goal. And, 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 and that should be the goal. And I, I talk about this a lot, that uh, you have to talk about what is the purpose of government it usually yeah. solves it. And the goal ought to be, uh, you, you know, promoting liberty, independence, a personal liberty to make your own decisions and work these problems out. It's not to deny them. It's just that the, the evidence is overwhelming that private property and volunteerism can solve the problems much better than the bureaucrats who have an agenda. You end up, the, we're, in, we're nearing the end stages because all you have to do is look what's going on in California and New York with their, with their lovable uh, authoritarians. <laughs> and could you ever have believed a year or two ago, they were practically on their way to the White House, but all of a sudden there's something, something happened because uh, it's a total failure. And that's why, 
That's why I can argue the case that the freer we are, the more prosperous we are, and the more we enjoy life because we make up our own minds. We get, we get rewarded for assuming some responsibility for ourselves. And that's all dissipated. That's why these kids that can't go to school, they haven't learned to, uh, you know, occupy their times, you know, and the schedule's got mixed, all messed up over this, that uh, what do they do? They, <clears throat> they, they play a game all day long yeah. and that's it. And uh, they cannot get personal satisfaction from that. And uh, this, this is the reason why we have to reject the whole principle of this authoritarianism solving our problems. And we need to get them out of this, this assumed practice of medicine, which they do not deserve and they can't do a good job. You know, I'll tell you the personal story. You know, if most of our audience knows my son's studying aerospace at Texas A&M. He just got a notice yesterday saying that for the fall semester, most likely they're going to continue in the current situation, which is remote learning. My son is actually thinking about taking some time off because he says, I can't go into my senior year. I need to be in a lab. I need to be doing these things. He's sitting up in his room watching it on TV, paying full price. So it's, it's really disgusting what they're doing to these young people. I have a couple of quick charts to close because I like doing these. You don't see them elsewhere. Let's look at this is, some people say this is the most important, which is excess deaths. And let's look at California versus Florida, if we can. <clears throat> Upper bound percentage of excess deaths. And if you look at uh, Florida on the left, stage phase three reopening September 25th, that was the end of the mask mandate. That was the end of social distancing, et cetera. And yeah, Florida definitely had a winter blip. Uh, definitely had a winter season. But look at California, which kept all of these restrictions in order. Look at the massive mountain of excessive deaths in California. How do you explain it? It's a good question. One final one before I sign off, Dr. Paul, and hand it over to you. This is the Czech Republic versus Sweden. Uh, Sweden, an 18% mask compliance. Hardly anyone is wearing them. And look at them down there at the bottom. Look at the Czech Republic, 86% mask compliance as of March 7th, and what's happening? Up, up, up the cases go. So they're, where, they're using 3,900% higher mask obedience in the Czech Republic. It's done nothing, nothing to deal with the daily deaths. Right. The two. Very good. You know, the other day, Chris and I did a program on democracy and the shortcomings of the dictatorship of, of, the, of the majority. But, uh, you know, a consensus and a prevailing attitude is very, very important. So we don't want pure democracy to uh, designate how we deal with this problem. But, um, but you still can learn something by going to the beach. I, I think you see it, uh, th thousands of people, and they're not all stupid. You know, they're not. Uh, you, sometimes you say, "Oh, they're just those college kids, and they're bumming around." But, but uh, why do they go? Do they go because they think it's like uh, jumping off a, mo a mountain top without a parachute? No, they they believe, and they're probably pretty close to uh, 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 to, to telling the truth compared to people trying to uh, tell them how dangerous it is and fear monger and do this and don't turn around don't leave your house and all all these other things so they uh they they could tell the truth i think it'd be interesting if you had a good journalist just go go to the beach and uh get a few of them when they're in a, uh, a sober serious mood and say why are you out here don't you think it's dangerous? This is what the, this is what the CDC says, and they're still saying that you ha you have to have a mask. This sort of thing, present it and say, why are you here? And uh, you, you know they might say, well, we don't believe them. <laughs> you know, one time uh, in, a, in our campaign, a young person came up to me afterwards, and uh, they liked what I was saying, and and uh, well, they, what I was saying in a debate, and then somebody else more or less said the same thing, and that was the defense of the Constitution and personal liberty. And afterwards, uh, somebody came up and he was complimenting and said, boy, I like what you're saying, this is good. And I said, well, um, I said, so-and-so said it too. He, he said it after I did. I said, what's the difference? He says, oh, we didn't believe him. So that, that I, th I thought, well, 
that, that's, that was a nice compliment as far as I was concerned. But uh, I think the young people would tell us the truth. Why the, and I just think their appearance is, uh, is giving us a message, but a little bit of insight could be gained by people finding out why, why do people come to the conclusion completely opposite of what the government says. That's what happens in economics. They, uh, at, at some point, and soon we're in the transition right now, people finally, when they destroy a currency, they start giving up on the currency, and they think the currency is getting weaker and prices go up and all this, because the, the masses figured it out. And then the government says, no, no, you're wrong. We're gonna fix the prices of wages and fix the prices of all goods and services and we're going to overcome that but the masses have figured it out in economic so it, it there is tr truth truth will come out uh it's just too bad that uh we can't do that before the crisis hits and we, we should be able to do that in foreign policy too uh, daniel and i work so hard on trying to send out a message prior to the invasion of iraq in 2000 uh, 2002 i guess it was and we argued and argued and argued and uh, no, and then thousands and thousands of people died. And finally, it became known as the stupid war. And uh, so it's, it's too bad we can't reach to people with the logic that we believe is correct, but we should be challenged. But, but also people should be hesitant and not to, uh, you know, just automatically believe everything the government tells us. And I think uh, we're winning that side of the position. Pe people are becoming less uh, believing in what the government tells us, and uh, they, they are less likely to trust the government. And that's for the far left, for the authoritarian, that's heresy. You mean question what the government is telling us? Yeah, I think that uh, we don't need uh, very much government. We need, we need very limited government. And when they tell you we're going to work on one issue is to restore the liberty to each and every individual, then we may get somewhere. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.